Suddenly, he heard the herald. His Majesty King of Fish of Sulani! As the king walks in, Kenjo bows and says, Your Majesty. Ah, yes, Mr. Kenjo Yamaguchi of Fish, I presume, the king replied. Yes, Your Majesty, Kenjo says bashfully. The king looked back at his guard, who waved for Kenjo to come. Please, come this way for breakfast, he said. We have much to discuss. Kenjo follows along with the guard and escort to meet the king in the dining hall. Thank you for coming to see me on such short notice. I am glad to finally make your acquaintance your letter. Filet, am I really going to be a grandpa? The king inquires. Kenjo nodded nervously. Yes, your majesty. The king, seeing Kenjo as a little nervous, softens his face and is a bit more calm and says, We're family now, son. We can be less formal and private. Please, call me Malin. Malin no fish. Kenjo, with a stutter, says, Oh, y yes, sir. Or, um, Marlin. The king snickered and said, Sir, Filet is pregnant with my grand fry. That's incredible. This is terribly exciting. She will be giving birth to the first of the next generation of the Ofish clan. I am thrilled. Well, let us finish up and head on over to the house you've been wanting to see. If you like it, we'll get it. I think it'll be perfect for you. Now, remember, this is my treat. This is my gift. Do not worry about the cost. I cannot wait to have you all back in the land of Sulani. Meanwhile, Filet decided she wanted to surprise her husband, so she flew to Sulani and headed straight to the palace of a fish. The first inhale of that beautiful salty sea air made her legs tingle, and the gentle hum of the palace crystals. Ugh. She couldn't help but to immediately want to run straight into the ocean, flip, and swim in the warm liquid heaven. She didn't know coming home could feel like this. She would have done it sooner. Now, Filet didn't regret leaving Sulani. She did what she had to do at the time. She bettered herself, got an education, and met her husband. Filet never planned on coming back to the ocean. She never discounted it either. But she was glad to be home. But will Filet and Marlin O'Fish put their family back together? Will they ever reconcile? Across the canal between islands and Muapalam, Marlin and Kenjo walk up to this magnificent Mediterranean-style home. It was just beautiful. Kenjo walked around the ground to check the exterior to make sure it was sound. Everything looked great. He got back to his majesty and they toured the inside. Everything looked as if it was built just for them. It had everything they needed, including a natural seawater pool in Lanai that would be wonderful for Filet and their children, and even himself all year round. Even playground toys for the baby and any future children. After a complete walkthrough, Kenjo looked at his majesty and said, Oh, my flounder, this is wondrous. It's like it was made for us, but it couldn't have. How could anyone know before we did? The king grinned and said, I'm glad you like it. Does it mean you'll take it? Well, Kenjo said, I need to talk to Flay first. The king nodded and replied, Yes, I agree. Let's go back to the palace and call her up and talk with her. Does she know you're here? Kenjo looked down at the sand a little bashfully and twisted his foot, making a deep hole with his shoe. Yes, your majesty, but she doesn't know I'm here with you. At least I don't think she does. I haven't gotten any calls from her, angry or otherwise, so probably not. Oh, she knew, and she was a little peeved, but she knows his heart was in the right place. She was royally pissed off after he left, thinking, how could he keep something like this from her? Upon his majesty and Kenjo's return to the palace, Filet was waiting outside, wriggling her toes in the sand. 
eyes daggered at Kenjo. But then she saw her father and bashfully looked down at the sand. While she was proud of all she had accomplished, she was ashamed about how she left things, leaving without a word, without giving her father a chance to understand and encourage her and then cut him off, except for a few letters, which she never replied to. His Majesty walks to his daughter, lifts her head in his hands and looks into her beautiful green eyes, then says, I was an ignorant man, a foolish father to you. I should have heard you. I should have listened harder. I'm so, so sorry. But you, my darling girl, do not have shame. You went out to pursue your dreams. I should have let you do it. You conquered the world your way and without my support, though it should have been there. There is nothing that you could have done or could ever do that would make me stop loving you. The pride I feel in my heart for you is immense. I'm glad you've returned. I'm a very proud father. He places his hand on her belly to feel the motions of his grand fry within her and an even prouder grandfather to be. You and your growing family are ever welcome in Sulani. I never wish you to leave again. Nothing would make me happier than to have you all back home in the kingdom. This is your home, your merfolk. You are born a creature of the sea. It will always call to you. This is where you're meant to be, always. The next morning, they were in the kitchen, noshing on some blueberry bagels and schmear when Kenjo took out his phone to show her the picture of the house he and his majesty saw yesterday. So what do you think? It's a beautiful place. I want to see it before I make up my mind though. But being back home, I don't know what I was so nervous about. Ever since I got off the plane, I felt better than I have in months. My skin is shimmering again, and the ocean water has hydrated me so completely. Thank you for convincing me to give this another try. Though, you should have told me you were coming to see my dad. And I think him and I need to have a very long conversation about everything. It's time. We're having a baby in a few months, and the last thing I want or need is the stressor of all of the unsaid things looming over us all. I think it's time to put it to bed and move on from it. Kenjo nodded and smiled and kissed his wife again and said, I think that's a wonderful idea. After breakfast, I'll just go exploring on my own and you and your father can go see the house and talk. Filet nodded and said, yeah, a father-daughter day is exactly what we need. Let's finish our meal. Will Filet and King O'Fish be able to talk things through, forgive each other, and move on from the past mistakes? Will Kenjo and Filet agree on a house? Come back next time when Filet and His Majesty King Marlin O'Fish visit the prospective house and have a long-awaited discussion. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please comment, rate, subscribe, and share. May you be well, happy, and peaceful, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.